Getting on an airplane is not very efficient. We get stuck behind people putting their luggages in the overhead compartment every 2-3 steps. Can we do better with reinforcement learning? In this series of videos, you'll see an end-to-end -end application of reinforcement learning to a real-world business problem. In order to solve a problem with reinforcement learning, we need to first structure the problem as a reinforcement learning problem. And we'll do just that in this video. This is the basic reinforcement learning paradigm. Uh, you have a learning agent here performing random actions in a simulation environment. The environment provides feedback in the form of a reward and observation. And the idea is that the agent will improve over time using the reward and observation. So the idea is if we can map a problem into this paradigm, we can solve it with reinforcement learning. However, this is a bit too abstract to be useful. Let's jump one layer down. Okay, this is one layer down. When we talk about training the agent, what is it that we're actually training? What we're actually training is a deep neural network. I found that it's a bit difficult to try to map the passenger onboarding problem into this paradigm. So let's start with a simpler problem and then we'll go back to the passenger onboarding problem. If you've seen any reinforcement learning examples, you probably would have seen this example. The basic idea is for this cart. Imagine this black box is a cart that you can move from side to side. The idea is to train it to balance this pole here. You can think of the network as the brain that controls what the cart does. The output of the network are the actions. In this case, the actions is either to go to the left so we'll use one node to represent going to the left and one node to represent going to the right. In this case, the output will just be two nodes. At the beginning of training, the weights and biases inside the network are all random. So what it spits out is just random actions. What you get is some kind of estimate. Let's say this randomly spits out 0.45 and this one randomly spits out 0.55 and depending on the learning algorithm this would add up to one or not but either way you just take the biggest number and in this case it's gonna go right we'll perform this action against the environment the environment is this one gymnasium is a python library that has dozens of reinforcement learning environments Carpo being one of them. So we're executing the action against the Carpo environment. After performing this action, if the pole is still standing, we get a reward of plus one. The observation that we get back is basically four numbers. The position of the cart, velocity of the cart, the angle of the pole, so the angle here in radians, and also the angular velocity of the pole, how fast it's falling. These four numbers basically describe what state the pole and the cart is in. We can use one node to represent each one of these numbers. It's position here, velocity, angle of the pole, and angular velocity of the pole. Now using the reward that it has just received, the weights and biases inside the network are adjusted. Essentially that reward tells me that that last action that was taken was good. So maybe do it some more next time. This flow repeats over and over again until the pole falls, at which point the environment resets and we do it all over again. And that is called one episode. And maybe in that first episode, we get a total reward of 50. In other words, the pole was able to stay up for 50 time steps. A time step is defined as an action and a feedback. Over time, we expect the total rewards to improve. You can think of reinforcement learning as a way to maximize the total rewards. After thousands, hundreds of thousands, or even millions of episodes, the deep network or the model is trained. Essentially, the model basically just memorize what to do depending on the state. Now we can go back to the passenger boarding problem and see how we can map it 
onto this reinforcement learning paradigm. Before we jump into it, pause the video and think about how you would map this problem. I think the best way to process the knowledge is to apply what you just learned. So think about it, write it down, drop it in the comments, and then keep going. Let's start with the simulation environment. Most of the time, the problem that you're trying to solve, there won't be a ready built out of the box environment that you can use. What you're seeing here, I had to create it. It is a custom reinforcement learning environment. And if you're interested, I will be publishing videos on how to build this. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't. But before we can jump into building an environment, we need to know what actions it can receive and what kind of rewards and observations to return. And that's why we have to do this mapping exercise. Building an environment, especially one that simulates real life, is not easy. So for the purpose of this learning exercise, we need to simplify the scenario. We'll forget about first class, business class, priority boarding, none of that. Everybody is on equal terms. People want to board as a family, as a group. That's going to get really complicated. Let's forget about that. We'll simulate one section of the plane because the other half is going to look about the same. We'll assume that everybody is carrying a piece of luggage that they need to put in the overhead compartment. When they're putting their stuff away, everybody behind them has to wait. We'll also assume that every seat is going to be taken. We'll also treat each one of the seats the same. So, so this guy here trying to get into seat 30, number 32 doesn't need to get up to let 30 in. He'll just jump right over. Okay, so what is it that we want the network to learn? What are the actions? What are the states? Let's go back to the basis of the problem. We want to load the plane as efficiently as possible. That means the order of the line matters. So here we have 50 passengers. Are we trying to decide the exact order of all 50 passengers? Remember that we said it doesn't matter which seat within a row that the passenger is in. The time that it takes to seat them within the row is the same. So we don't really need to decide the exact order of the whole line. We just need to determine who to send from each row first. So this is the lobby and they're conveniently seated in the same order as the seats on the plane. Our network just needs to learn which row to send instead of which passenger to send. So the first action could be let's send somebody from row 3. So this guy gets in line. And then it could say, give me somebody from row five. And this person goes into the line. So that's what our network's going to output. So for this example, the outputs are what row of passenger to send. We're gonna have 10 nodes to represent each one of these actions. Obviously, if we change how many rows there are in the plane, the network also changes. That means if we train for 10 rows, our network is only going to be able to optimize for 10 rows. And if the number changes, we need to train the network for that number. Okay, so we have our action now. What about our observation and state? Now remember the point of the state. The state is for the network to memorize when the environment looks like this, do this action. What are some possible ways to represent the state? At first I thought maybe I'll just encode how many passengers have already sat down. For the first row, we have one passenger that had already sit down, sat down, zero here, four of them here, and so on. It turned out that this didn't really work for me. The way this state is represented just didn't correlate to how fast people were getting sat down. What I ended up doing was using the boarding line, this line here, as the state. First, I need to create an encoding to represent what's happening in the line. If the passenger is moving, I'll use zero to represent that. If the passenger is stalled, it'll be a one. If the passenger is stowing their luggage, two. And if it's an empty spot in the line, negative one. It will look like this. 
this person is stowing it'll be a two everybody behind him is stalled those are all ones and then let's say somebody is moving there's an empty spot in front somebody's moving this will be a zero now going back to here my observation is going to be the status of the passenger in line so for example it's gonna look like a chain of numbers since there are 50 passengers in this example we're gonna have a list of 50 numbers but is the line ever gonna get to 50 no but i don't know what the average is gonna be and uh in this case, I don't need to bother calculating it, so I'm just going to use 50, knowing that most of the time, maybe the stuff in the back is going to be a whole lot of negative ones. Okay, so that's the observation, means that for the state, I'm going to have 50 nodes, same thing, represented by numbers like these. Now, depending on what the line looks like, the network can decide which for a passenger to send to the line. Now the last thing, the reward. I tried using the number of seated passengers as a reward. In this case, there are 17 passengers that have already been seated. I thought the network would try to optimize or maximize the number of seated passengers, but it didn't really work out. The pattern at which the rewards were returning was just too similar from one episode to another. For example, there's always going to be one passenger seated first, so you get a reward of one, and then the next passenger that gets seated, you get a reward of two, and then so on. This is the first episode. Second episode looks almost the same. So there wasn't a way for the network to take the reward and, and do any kind of optimization. What ended up working was doing a penalty instead. When a passenger is stowing, everybody behind him is stalled. So in this case, there are 10 passengers that are stalled or stuck behind this person. So we get a reward or penalty of minus 10. Using a penalty instead, the agent was able to optimize the neural network. So finishing this mapping, the reward is number of stalled passengers. Okay, so we have completed mapping the passenger boarding problem onto a reinforcement learning paradigm. All those times that I mentioned that my observation didn't work or the reward didn't work, it wasn't until I had the environment built, try to do learning on the environment, before I realized that the agent just was not learning. But before we can build the environment, we do need to know what are our options for reward, action, observation. So this exercise was necessary. If you have your own problem that you think can be solved with reinforcement learning, try to do this exercise yourself and you're welcome to drop whatever you discover into the comments. In future videos, let's continue with this example and I'll show you how to build a custom reinforcement learning environment and train it with the PPO algorithm. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't. I'll catch you in the next one.